Hey, hey, hey. Sorry guys, I watched Date Night last night with Tina Fey and Steve Carell when they're at Mark Wahlberg's apartment and Steve Carell's pretending to be him and he's like, was that supposed to be me or Fat Albert? So yeah, that's my best Fat Albert impression for you guys. Not very good, I'm afraid. But what is good is the top five books that I'm going to be recommending to you guys in this video as five books that you need to read now. The first book I have to recommend to you guys is a book that everyone and their mother has probably already read, but that would be The Martian by Andy Weir. I just finished this. I have, I have yet to see the movie, but I've heard it is fantastic. But the book is amazing. It was so good, beautifully written, and the storyline is very unique. After watching so many space movies and reading so many space books, I thought the plot of this might be a little tired and dry, but boy was I wrong. It follows the story of an astronaut named Mark Watney, played by Matt Damon in the movie after he gets trapped on Mars. NASA has recently started a program where they send astronauts up to Mars, and I believe he was on the third mission to Mars. But while there, a major storm comes and his crew is forced to evacuate, believing that he is dead. So this is his story about how he survives. Around a fourth of the way through the book, we get another perspective, which is the perspective of the people on Earth. They have realized that Mark Watney is in fact very much alive and must devise a plan to get him home. I really, really enjoyed this book for so many different reasons. It was an amazing read, five out of five stars, definitely. And rather than staying with Mark Watney through the whole book, I really liked how it showed the perspective of the people at NASA and what they were doing to rescue him. And then it later jumps into the perspective of his crewmates who are on their way back to Earth and have to come to terms with the fact that they left him behind. One of the biggest themes that I devised from this novel was hope. In so many stories that we read, it's easy for a protagonist to lose hope. However, rather than seeing the glass half empty, Mark decides to view it as half full. His humor really helps carry him through these difficult times. And that was another major aspect that I really enjoyed about this book. I laughed so many times while reading from his perspective just because it is so cleverly written and so funny. The Martian is a book I would recommend to anyone. And in my own personal life, there are a lot of males that are less likely to read than there are females. And I would definitely recommend The Martian to them as well. So the next time you're at a bookstore, if you have a persnickety nephew that doesn't read too much, or you want to give your husband an early Christmas present, pick up The Martian and you will not regret it. The next book I have to recommend for you is The 100 Foot Journey by Richard C. Morris. Pretty sure I butchered that last name, but I will definitely not be butchering this book. It is so beautiful. I adore this book. This book is about second chances, about finding your passion in life. Obviously, another five out of five stars. I think every book that I'm going to show you in this video is going to be five out of five stars. The 100 Foot Journey follows the story of Hassan Haji and his Indian family, as well as his relationship with food. Ever since a young age, Hassan has always realized his passion for food, and it really started with his grandparents. However, due to a lot of tragedy that his family endured in India, his father decided to pack them up and essentially run away from his problems. They end up staying about a year in London until they finally settle in a small French mountain village. Once here, Hassan's father decides he wants to open a restaurant. The people of this small French town go crazy for Hassan's creations. But there is one person that isn't too happy to have them on the block. That is the persnickety Madame Mallory, who owns her own restaurant just across the street. Madame Mallory is a very proper French woman who has been involved in the hospitality industry her entire life. She runs a very upscale restaurant. Her ideas fit nothing with Hassan's father, whose restaurant has unusual cuisine and even more peculiar entertainment. And so starts the rivalry between these two restaurants. Things start getting out of hand, however, and Hassan realizes that he doesn't want any part of it. And that is when two forces must come together. After eating at this boisterous Indian restaurant, Madame Mallory sees the passion that Hassan puts into his food and decides to take him under her wing. I strongly recommend this book. The main theme that I pulled was passion. Not only a passion for cooking, which is really accentuated in this book, but a passion for life, a passion about finding what you're meant to do and doing it and excelling. I'm sure a lot of people with a love of food will really appreciate this. 
But even if you don't have that culinary background, I think you could still get a lot out of this. Richard C. Morris has this extraordinary talent where he can describe a scene perfectly with just a sentence. There are also plenty of sentences in this book that really make you think about your own life. The next book that I have to recommend for you guys would be The Bourbon Kings by J.R. Ward. I do have a review coming for this book. I'm just not sure when I'm going to post it yet. It has to be edited and uploaded. This book was phenomenal. If you recognize the name J.R. Ward, she is the author of the Black Dagger Brotherhood, which is a paranormal romance series, I believe. Nothing like it. This is the first book in her new series. And it follows a very rich Kentucky family that has made their money in the bourbon industry. And while a passerby may look at this family and say, wow, they have it all. They have money, four amazing children, a beautiful house. What more could you ask for? The Baldwines, who are the family in this book, know better. This story follows a few different perspectives. It follows that of Lane Bradford, who is the prodigal son, who is returning home after being in New York for a few years. It also follows his ex-lover, as well as the gardener of his family's estate, Lizzie King, his older brother, Edward, and his younger sister, Ginny. And I really recommend this book. Rather than being labeled as one genre, it actually encompasses a few different things. So more people would appreciate this book. We do have this love story between Lizzie and Lane, but then we also have the drama that is going on in Lane's own family, as well as a mystery that sets it up perfectly for the next book. The Bourbon Kings is on sale now, so I recommend you go pick it up or check it out from your public library. Let's talk about a series that I don't have on me right now, and that would be the Fever series by Karen Marie Monty. When I first started BookTube, I didn't see any videos about this amazing series. However, in the past month or two, it has really taken off and it deserves every single bit of it. This series deals with a lot of paranormal elements. I really don't want to say too much about the series because I really want you guys to discover things for yourself. But if you like paranormal, you will definitely love this book. It follows the story of Michaela Lane, who has gone over to Ireland to try and find her missing sister. While there, she stays with a mysterious bookshop owner named Jericho Behrens, aka one of my favorite male characters ever written. While there, she encounters many paranormal entities, including kings and princes and mysterious creatures that look like rhinos and a dangerous book that wields enormous power. The last book I want to recommend is one of the books that I credit so largely for getting me into reading. I remember having to read it in sixth grade, I believe, as a class, and I was hooked. I loved it and I loved reading after that. I believe this book is a middle grade, but I still think everyone should pick it up. And that is The Western Game by Ellen Raskin. I cannot say enough good things about this book, you guys. I loved it. I thought it was beautifully written. It is a mystery of sorts and it features an amazing cast of characters. As you can see, my edition is well loved. Because I'm afraid I'm not doing one of my favorite books justice, I'm just going to read the back to you guys. A highly inventive mystery begins when 16 unlikely people gather for the reading of a very strange will of the very rich Samuel W. Westing. They could become millionaires, depending on how they play a game. All they have to do is find the answer. But the answer to what? The Westing game is tricky and dangerous, but the heirs play on through blizzards, burglaries, and bombings. I may be saying this because it is one of my favorite books and I'm a bit biased, but it is amazing. Me personally, if a book has a lot of characters, it can get rather hit or miss. And you may be thinking that 16 characters is quite a bit, but they all live in the same apartment complex and the way each character's life interacts with another character doesn't make it feel like there's that many people involved in this book. Westing Game is perfect for anyone, whether you're in a reading slump or just enjoy a lighthearted mystery or whether you have a young reader at home, I really recommend you pick up this book. So those are the top five books that I think you need to read now. So go get on it. If you have already read any of these books, please let me know what you thought of them down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye.